Good morning. Would you please join with me in singing our national anthem? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the I arrived at college many years ago, driven by one purpose, to get out of the math requirement. <laughs> I'm sorry, Professor Roy and Professor Roy and Professor Modry and Professor Stauber and Professor Haynes and... No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I got out of it. I won't go into the sordid details of how I did it, but it so happens that the Dean of Freshmen was a professor of religion. And he led me out of my math class and into a Bible class. And he handed me the book we were going to be studying. It was an Old Testament. It was in Hebrew. I couldn't read it, but I wanted to sound smart. So I said, well, I can't read this, but I know where Genesis is. <laughs> See, it says right there in the beginning. Now, this is a trick question. My students would be surprised at that, but do you know the mistake I made? Where was Genesis in the Hebrew Bible? It's in the back, because Hebrew is written from right to left. So that day, I learned something about education. What I thought was the beginning was the ending, and what I thought was the ending was the beginning. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, Bereshit, Bera, Elohim, Et Hashemayim, Ba'et Ha'eretz. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. So begins the book of Genesis. And then, God, you brooded like a dove over those first waters. Then you descended as a dove when Jesus was baptized. You sent the flood that destroyed, and then you sent the water of eternal life, God of endings, God of beginnings, God who turns endings into beginnings, like water into wine, descend today into our midst, we pray. You parted the waters of four years of stress and study and homesickness for these students. Now shower blessings upon them. Give them a full sense of their accomplishment and a new rush of purpose. Under your guidance, may they continue to love to learn and learn to love. We ask it for your sake and in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is celebration time at... Davis and Elkins College, and it is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome each of you this day as we come together, first and foremost, to celebrate those that complete their course of study this day to receive their degrees. We come together with an awful lot of pride in our graduates. 
I want to uh, welcome you not only to this 108th commencement of Davis and Elkins College, but also I want to begin our time together by recognizing some very important people. And I begin with those that are seated behind me, our esteemed faculty that has brought these students to this place. I'm also pleased, in addition to the platform party that you will be hearing from during the course of this ceremony, to welcome members of our Board of Trustees. If we completed a couple of days of our spring meetings this week, and some have been able to stay and join us this day. And I want to ask members of our board who are either on the stage, I think some might be in the audience, as well as their spouses, as well as my spouse, Lisa Wood, I'm going to ask all of them if they would please stand, and would you join me in greeting them? I also want to recognize three people who have meant an awful lot to Davis and Elkins College and who have left their legacy upon this campus. We are very, very pleased that as a part of our family, some folks that are entering into a new chapter in their lives but will continue to be related to this institution, we do want to recognize three members of our faculty this day that are retiring at the conclusion of this academic year. And I would ask them to stand, please, as their names are read, and again, ask you to join me in recognizing them. Professor Sue Talbot, Professor Dr. Jane Woods, and Dr. Bob McCutcheon. Please welcome. <laughs> For our graduating seniors, today is the time when all of your hard work all of your hopes, all of your dreams come to fruition. And as I have the privilege this day of shaking your hand, the hand of our deserving graduates as they receive their diplomas, each piece of parchment symbolizes so much more than the completion of a course of study. For each one of our students, the diploma represents the acknowledgement of an accomplishment as well as an opportunity to pursue dreams. Graduation is not possible without hard work, some late night studying, expansion of intellectual horizons and social growth. Graduation is not possible without dedicated faculty that pour themselves into their students, filling them with knowledge, with curiosity, indeed filling them with confidence. A Davis and Elkins College graduate has a bigger picture of our world and a grasp of the complexities of our culture. And they also graduate with an understanding of our responsibility to God's world and indeed our responsibility to God's people. For those of you that are the families of our graduates, this piece of parchment, this diploma, represents an accomplishment for you as well. Parents and other family members have sacrificed so that their son or so that their daughter could experience the transformative education that Davis and Elkins College offers. And in return, you receive an overflowing sense of pride, both in the accomplishment and the opportunity for the future that is embodied in your graduate. All of the sacrifice is worth it. It's worth it when a young man or a young woman whom you love so much walks across this stage, beaming with joy and brimming with yet-to-be-realized life opportunities, crystallized in a moment and in a life for you, more than two decades of work and sacrifice and nurture become the bargain of a lifetime. For Davis and Elkins College and for each of our alumni, that parchment, that diploma represents and affirms the mission of this institution 
and the personal love and dedication that we all share for d and In short, this college exists so that we might provide an educational experience second to none. And the diploma is the symbol of living out our mission. The tangible sign of success is visible in each DNE graduate scattered in the communities across this country as well as internationally. That in making a difference, they're out there making a difference in the lives of people and making our world just a bit brighter. Today's commencement activities are a marker along life's journey for all of us connected to this college and particularly for our graduates. Commencement exercises are not the culmination of the journey, but rather they are a milestone along the way. The journey that brought these students to the mountains of Randolph County and to the gem of the institution on the hill continues. And it will lead them to places and to experiences that hold great promise. Like the friendships that our students have forged on this campus, there are intriguing, creative, and life-loving people for you that are waiting to be encountered on the journey as each of you, our graduates, move on today from d &E. You literally have your lives before you, and you, your lives, are filled with opportunity thanks to the decision that you made to spend these years at Davis and Elkins College. At commencement, we pause to give thanks, and then we move on. We move on with hope, we move on with optimism for the journey continues. I'm going to ask Dr. Sharmi Roy to come forward, our Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs, as we prepare for the conferring of an honorary degree. Thank you, President Wood. Mr. President, trustees, faculty and students, and honored guests, colleges and university confer honorary doctoral degrees to recognize individuals of true distinction, persons whose achievements in the areas of scholarship, service, and leadership bear testament to the values for which these institutions stand. The exemplary lives and achievements of those we so honor provide worthy models for all to emulate. President Wood, it is my great privilege to present to you Dr. John A. Oxendorf for the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Dr. John Oxendorf, you return to Elkins, your birthplace in 1974 and to the campus of Davis and Elkins College today, not as a stranger, but as a distinguished educator, an imaginative leader, and a son of Elkins. As a 1992 graduate of Elkins High School, you went on to attend three very prestigious institutions of higher education, receiving a Bachelor of Science and Engineering degree from Cornell University in 1996, a Master of Science and Engineering degree from Princeton University in 1998, and a PhD in Engineering from Cambridge University in 2002. Now you are serving as the Class of 1942 Professor of Architecture and Civil and Environmental Engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. You have recently been named as the director of the American Academy in Rome, where you will soon begin a three-year term before returning to MIT. An expert on the mechanics and behavior of masonry structures. And boy, we have a lot in common there, let me tell you. <laughs> you collaborate with art historians, architects, and engineers on the study and structural assessment of historic monuments around the world. 
In 2008, you were named a MacArthur Fellow for your pioneering work using comparative cultural and historical studies to explore pre-industrial engineering traditions. John, you grew up among these beautiful mountains, and you have indicated that Davis and Elkins College has served as a beacon for your own education during your formative years. Your family has significant ties to D&E as well. Your father, Gene Oxendorf, who is with us this day, previously worked for the Veterans Upward Bound program, and your mother, Nancy Howland, is a proud d and alumnus, having graduated in 2000 with a degree in psychology. Since 2010, John and his wife, Ann Carney, who I discovered today, were married here at Davis and Elkins College in Hallihurst, have served as housemasters of the MIT graduate student dormitory called The Warehouse. An avid outdoorsman, John is an enthusiastic soccer player and enjoys hiking, camping, and cycling, something I suspect he developed while living here in Elkins. In addition to Elkins and Cambridge, Massachusetts, John has lived in Australia, England, Spain, and Italy. Today, Davis and Elkins College recognizes you, Dr. John Oxendorf, for the outstanding academic accomplishments in your storied career. You make your hometown of Elkins proud. Therefore, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, and I order you to be invested with the hood that is the token of this high honor. Dr. Oxendorf, I invite you now to the podium to provide the 2017 commencement address to the graduates of Davis and Elkins College. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in welcoming Dr. Oxendorf? Thank you so much, and um, I can tell you that was the easiest degree I've ever earned. <laughs> and for all of you graduates who've had to work so hard to be here today, um, I hope you two get to earn an easy degree someday. Usually they're not so easy. Uh, good morning, d and &E. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. So proud to be part of this special day. It's a great honor for me. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I, I'm very proud of my Elkins roots, and uh, I always love to come home. I wouldn't have wanted to grow up anywhere else in the world. President Wood, Chair of the Board Miles, uh, faculty, students, families, and friends, I'm here today to show my gratitude to D&E and also, most of all, to congratulate the 2017 class of Davis and Elkins College. Congratulations. So today marks a new beginning for all of us, but especially for you. You've all worked very hard to get to this day, and you're here because your loved ones supported you. They didn't let you fail. You may have forgotten a lot of the little things that your family and friends did for you along the way, but they're sharing in your success today. So let's please have a big round of applause for the families and loved ones of the graduates. My own family always supported my interests in education, kept my feet on the ground. Uh, my father, Gene, was a teacher and um, worked here for many years at the college. And, but as I kept racking up degrees, including this one, um, he always made sure I kept my feet on the ground, made sure that I, I, I earned anything that I did. And you know, for many years, I worked odd jobs in the neighborhoods around this campus. In fact, there are probably a few faculty behind me who are thinking, my grass is a little long right now, and I wonder if he's busy this afternoon and could stop by and mow the lawn because, Stephanie, I'm looking at you. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I'm proud to have grown up together with a number of D&E professors, and these are dedicated, gracious people, uh, people like Mike and Stephanie and Marianne and, and uh, Charmy and others. And, you know, the influence of a good teacher ripples down through generations, and you'll continue to think back on things that you learned here uh, for years to come. And not just the professors, but also the staff of the college have really invested in all of you, and they deserve our gratitude. So let's hear it for the teachers and the staff. <clears throat> now, d and &E brought a lot of positive things to my life, but I'd like to share a few personal histories. So as a child growing up in the neighborhood, right down by the city park at the, below the college, we benefited hugely from D&E. Obviously, the library, the sports facilities, the Augusta Festival, the wider D&E community that enriched our lives really every day. Um, there's one thing for a child, though, that really stands out. You know, my children right now, when we go sled riding, we go down a little driveway, and it's about a 10-foot elevation drop, and they think it's the most exciting thing in the world. And I'm shaking my head, and I'm thinking, these kids don't know what a sled riding hill is. <laughs> So one of these years, I'm going to have to get them back here to go down a real hill. Um, there are two things that really stand out for me about what I, I got from D&E, though. Number one, the international students at D&E. They really expanded uh, my horizons, and uh, my parents befriended many international students. They were a regular fixture at the dinner table in our home. I don't know if it was because they were hungry or they liked the company, but... Uh, Pretty much if I went to dinner, I'd expect to see someone maybe from Trinidad and Tobago or Canada, Japan, Ireland, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, other places far from West Virginia. And these D&E &E students really opened my eyes to the world, and they made me want to meet more people like them. They made me want to travel to every corner of this beautiful planet, learn other languages, celebrate differences and similarities. So I'd like to say to the international students who are graduating today, you know, you've served as ambassadors and you continue to serve on behalf of your own country, but you're also all West Virginians now. And um, I'd like to ask that the international students stand and be recognized. Thank you for all that you've brought to our community. We hope you will remain connected to D&E &E and to Elkins for the rest of your life, and we hope you'll go back home and tell people about what a special place this is. The second thing I'm most grateful for are the two beautiful mansions at the top of the hill, Hallyhurst and Graceland. You know, it's difficult to believe, but 30 years ago, those mansions were falling down. And um, this is a bit of a confession here. As a child, my brothers and I used to break into those rundown mansions and sneak around at night, and you'd come around a corner with a flashlight and find a mirror, and you'd be sure you saw a ghost in there, and you'd run out screaming. And um, it was incredibly exciting. I would like to apologize here in public to the campus <laughs> security guard, Howard, um, for any problems we may have caused him. Um, but those experiences left, a, they really left a deep impression on me. They helped to nurture my childhood dreams of studying the great buildings of the world. And now I work to preserve historic buildings all over the, the planet. And that curiosity and thirst was really born here on this campus. Um, so thanks to the vision of D&E and the many donors and friends of the college, both mansions have been beautifully restored. And the happiest day of my life occurred when I was married here on this campus 11 years ago. So I'm really grateful for those buildings and also to the supporters of d and &E who maintain the campus. And I'd like to thank all of the donors in particular for, uh, for supporting this and maintaining the campus. Thank you. Um, they told me I only had two hours, so buckle up. Um, <laughs> You know, I was last on this stage 25 years ago this month when I graduated from Elkins High School here in the same auditorium. And um, I'd like to share a few words of advice for the graduates. I remember sitting in the audience thinking, God, when is this going to be over? Um, but uh, what I'd like to say, I hope you'll, you'll remember a few, a few uh, pieces of advice and you hope, hope you'll forgive me for uh, taking the opportunity to give some. 
So I think we all know what it takes to be successful. Hard work, uh, some luck, your own God-given talents. I'd say these are important, but I've really had success uh, for one reason. I found people I admired and I learned from them. So you should try to find someone who you look up to, who you respect in any field. Learn from them. Sit at the feet of a master, whoever they are, and, uh, and keep learning. No matter where you end up, try to work with people who you look up to. So I'd like to, to, in my few short minutes, just share the stories of three people connected to West Virginia who I really admire, who I keep learning from, and each of them offers a lesson about how to live a productive life. So the first person is someone who grew up on this campus as a child. Growing up on the campus of DE, he went on to become the president of MIT, the na- president of the National Academy of Engineering, and he served as a science advisor to multiple U.S. presidents. And for those of you who are wondering how a kid from West Virginia got on the faculty at MIT, it's because the president was from Elkins. So now you know. Um, this was a little boy named Tuffy, but he became an internationally known educational leader named Chuck Vest. Chuck's father, Marvin, taught mathematics at d in the 1930s. So Chuck went to WVU as an undergraduate. He learned math at a young age here on campus like I did. He recently lost a battle with cancer, but I'm blessed to have known him for the last 12 years of his life. And at the end of his life, he wrote a little book called Pursuing the Endless Frontier, where he laid out the challenges and opportunities for research and education. And he believed in the endless frontier of learning. He was a champion for lifelong learning. And he taught that the world is filled with interesting questions and problems. And even if you're no longer in school, you should always be learning. You should move outside your comfort zone, find new frontiers, challenge yourself. And Chuck went from playing as a kid on this campus to advising world leaders in the White House. Chuck was also a great champion for equality in education and access to education, and he believed everyone should have an opportunity to education. Some of the graduates today are the first in their family to graduate from college. As such, you are a first generation student, you're a pioneer, You deserve to be celebrated as well. Please stand if you're the first in your family to graduate from college. Wow. Wow. That's absolutely amazing. You all are going to make me cry. So, when my mom graduated from D&E, she wasn't the first in her family to go to college, but she'd already raised six kids, and she earned her degree at the age of 48 from the best small college in West Virginia. The second person I want to tell you about is Mary Sansaloni. She grew up in Fairmont, and uh, she was an incredibly talented athlete. She played Major League Softball. She was heading for the 80s, 1980 Olympics in uh, Moscow. We boycotted the game, so she turned to education. She got a PhD in engineering, became a professor. And three years later, she was named the best professor in the entire nation. She was invited to the White House, received the award from the president. And I met her about two months after that, and she just looked at me and she said, I like your accent. Where are you from? Where are you from? She learned, she learned I was from Elkins, from Elkins not far from Fairmont. She took me under her wing. She adopted, adopted me. You know, being, you know, being a, a, from West from West Virginia's main advantage, we mount the house, look out for each other for the international so now we're now West Virginia. Remember that. Remember that. Um, um, and what, and I, what I learned from Mary, Mary was that was you should always, should always put other people's interests interest before your own. Your own. And she did, she did this for her and students. And, and, and when you put, when you put on his interest, interest first, they, they thrive, thrive, and everybody, and everybody thrives, thrives, and you look, you look good. I can't pay you back for your generosity, 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 generosity you showed, showed me, but I pay it forward, I pay it forward to other students, students, to those who are less fortunate. fortunate. And the more you give to others, the more you receive, so I encourage you all to help others who are less fortunate, and that will enrich your life tremendously. So please serve others. Finally, the third person, person is someone I want to high school with here in Elkins. Elkins. This, this is someone, someone who's absolutely, absolutely passionate, passionate about, about our community. Our community. Does, an does an unbelievable amount, amount of uh, good uh, here in Elkins. Elkins. Brings, brings a lot of enthusiasm. He does, 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 does. Loves the mountains, mountains and rivers every corner, corner of West Virginia. Virginia. And he probably and he takes better advantage of his mountains playground than anyone I know. 
He's also He's committed, committed to public, public health, health and to improving the health of our community. And he believes strongly in the future of elk and the great potential of, of Randolph County as, a, as one of the best places to live and raise a family in the 21st century. And the person I'm talking about is Sid Gillespie, director of the YMCA. Please give a round of thanks to Sid, who's here. And to his wife, Sue. You all can stand up, both of you. Please stand up. Sid and Sue. And she's the real one behind it all. You know, they're doing so many good things for Elkins, so I want to recognize their hard work. But um, he's just an incredibly passionate person, too. So, so that's what I take away from Sid. Be passionate about what you do. And uh, it doesn't matter what it is that you're doing. If you're passionate about it and you're serving others and you're learning, I can tell you you're going to have an exciting and fulfilling life. So Sid's a great example of how one person can make a big difference. And if you're about 10% as passionate as Sid, you're doing very well. So in summary, these three people gave me three really incredible lessons. Chuck Vest taught me to never stop learning. Always push yourself outside of your comfort zone. That's why I'm about to move to Italy next month and try to learn Italian, and um, it's not going to be pretty. Um, Mary Sansaloni taught me to serve other people, to put other people's interests before my own. And Sid Gillespie taught me to be passionate about what I do. So again, do these three things. I promise you'll have an exciting life. But also, as you go out in the world, ask yourself occasionally, am I helping other people? Am I learning? Am I passionate about my work? And find people to work with who you admire and look up to. And, um, you know, I love coming home to Elkins. I'm so honored to be here, and I'm immensely grateful for everything d &E gave me. I'm proud of each and every one of the graduates um, it's really only the beginning, though, for you, and Helen Keller said that life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. To the Davis and Elkins College class of 2017, there's a world out there that needs your talents, your hard work, and your compassion. Congratulations. Good luck on your adventure. Thank you. Dr. Oxendorf, thank you so much. I have a feeling that uh, might be in years to come as other commencement addresses are given. And as people talk about those who have had tremendous influence upon them, I wouldn't be surprised if your name is mentioned among that group. We thank you for being with us this morning. And once again, I know I speak for the Elkins community when I say we're very proud to claim you as your own. Thank you very much. It is indeed my honor to introduce the chair of our board of trustees, it's a distinct honor to introduce Dr. June Miles. June received her BA from Hollins College in 1964 and attended Sorbonne University in Paris. In 2010, she received an honorary doctorate of humane letters from Davis and Elkins College. Following June's schooling, she headed to New York City to embark in a career in management information systems, working with AT&T Treasury and American Airlines, developing and managing computer systems for 15 years. Subsequently, she worked as a consultant with Polycast and Management Compensation Group. In recent years, she has developed and conducted educational workshops for young children at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And in 1998, she assumed the role of president of the Miles Lumber Company, a 50-year-old company that was founded by her father, George A. Miles. June is the author of two books, Footnotes, the official songbook for the New York City Marathon, and If Wool Could Talk, Hooked Rugs, a Memoir. I recommend it. A resident of Reading, Connecticut, June serves as a docent for the American Museum of Natural History in New York. She has served as the president of the Board of Trustees for the Mark Twain Library in Reading, Connecticut, and currently serves on the Board of Directors here in Elkins for the Davis Trust Company, as well as the Board of Trustees of the Davis Health System Foundation, and is a trustee emeritus of the Randolph County Community Arts Center here in Elkins. 
June has been a member of our board at DNE for 16 of the past 17 years and has been serving as the chair since 2013. Would you please welcome Dr. June Miles? That puts me in a bad spot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to the class of 2017, from congratulations from all of the trustees. You have made it. Um, now for a story about engineers of a slightly different sort. The first spring, I lived in the country. A pair of house finches elected to build a nest on my front door. From behind another door, I could watch the architects at work. Soon came the eggs and mom's diligence as the, at keeping them warm and safe. Days later, there were cracks in those eggs and lots of little peeps. Then four bundles of down huddled together in that nest. It was great fun watching mom and dad take turns watching over and foraging for food to feed the growing family. Down turned to feathers. Then one by one, there was only one bird left in the nest. I had missed the other's exit. But I was lucky to witness as the last bird gathered the courage to test its wings and leave the nest. As trustees, we are privileged to watch as you progress from freshman, excited and perhaps anxious, to confident and accomplished seniors. We know academic relationships are built and that you and your professors work to ensure that you fulfill all the requirements for graduation. And along the way, we hope, we hope, you develop a love of learning. Some also find mentors among the administrative staff, so we watch as the campus friendships grow, the teams build, the performances glow. We see the proud support of family and friends. So to you all today, we celebrate a job well done. Faculty, administration, family and friends, but most of all, you, the students of the class of 2017. As trustees, we thank you, and may all the efforts and nurturing prepare you for um, success and thoughtful engagement in the world. We hope, we hope, you have a special place in your heart for DNE, and that you return soon and often to visit. So as you take flight today, remember, if it is worth doing, it is worth doing well. If it is worth doing, it is worth doing well. So hooray, hooray, it's graduation day. Thank you, thank you Dr. Oxendorf, and thank you, Dr. Miles. That was wonderful. At the annual honors convocation held in this auditorium a month ago, we recognized the academic and student life achievements of students from across campus. The students so honored have shaped the intellectual and social character of Davidson Elkins College in a variety of powerful and positive ways. As tradition has it, however, we wait for commencement, the completion of all coursework, and the calculation of final grade point averages to determine the final two academic achievement awards of the year. The first award is that of our salutatorian. The salutatorian is the graduating senior with the second highest point grade point average of his or her graduating class. The salutatorian of the Davis and Elkins College class of 2017 is Brandon Terry Sellers. Brandon is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in biology 
and it's my great pleasure to recognize Brandon Terry Sellers as the salutatorian of the class of 2017. Randall will now offer his remarks as salutatorian. Good morning, and welcome to the, welcome to the 2017 Davison Elkins College commencement ceremony. President Wood, administration, board of trustees, faculty, staff, and my fellow graduates. I am truly honored to stand before you on this day of distinction, celebration, and reflection. Thank you, God. Thank you, family. And thank you, friends. Without your help, I would not be standing here today. Graduating seniors, congratulations on a job well done as we finish up our journey at this beautiful college. After being informed of this opportunity to speak at commencement, I took some time to reflect upon what I would like to leave with each of you as we go our separate ways. My words are coming to you in the form of a story this morning. This story is of a young man who lived a life like most high school kids. He went to school and stayed busy with extracurricular activities. The world seemed pretty consistent for the young man. After graduating high school, he had the opportunity to attend college as a collegiate athlete. During this time, he made some lifelong friends and great memories just as the class that sits before me has done over the last several years. Four years of college rolls around, and it was yet the end of another chapter in his life. From the outside looking in, his life seemed normal. Like I said, he was like most people his age. At the end of his undergraduate career, he decided... <clears throat> bear with me. At the end of his um, undergraduate career, he decided to take some time to reflect upon his journey over the previous years. In the midst of all, of all the recollections, a few distinct moments stood out to him. Over the, last, over the last several years, the young man had experienced and learned more than what meets the eye. He felt the emptiness, uh, hold up. He saw the effect of losing both his parents on himself, his brother, and remaining family. He felt the emptiness and broken down feeling of loneliness. At some points, he was angry and did not understand <clears throat> why something like this could happen. And this is reminiscing upon these feelings, other feelings of uplifting positivity became, began to arise. He thought about how he saw the people around him unite to lovingly support him and his family during these times. <clears throat> he saw how faith in God and perseverance kept him moving forward. He saw how teamwork from his aunt, uncle, and family <clears throat> would, help him, would help him and his brother. He thought about how his college presented him with open arms to continue his academic <clears throat> and athletic career when the time was presented when the time presented itself. He learned <clears throat> he learned the true meaning of compassion and how to respect others in time of despair. So amongst all the <clears throat> so amongst all the negativity during his recollection, he began to smile as he thought about how far he had come. It brought joy and peace to him to know that <clears throat> that some things in life we just cannot understand, but can mold and shape us into a new creation. He knew that his story could be used to tell, to tell you about the growth and perseverance, faith, love, and teamwork that can come with moments that have the ability to shape you into a stronger person. That's why I tell you his story today. I tell you his story because in life, tough times may come your way. It's up to you to decide on how to respond. Will you be able to look back and connect the dots and see personal growth? As a result, Will you feel like you are more prepared to make a difference in society? 
As I stand before you today, I feel prepared to make a difference. I feel this way because of the education that I gained at Davis and Elkins College. I feel this way because the story of the young man was my story. Did I really want to talk about this today? Absolutely not. <clears throat> but I felt I needed to share what perseverance, faith, love, and teamwork did for me during the toughest times of my life. <clears throat> Vince Lombardi once said, the real glory is being knocked down to your knees and then coming back. That's the real glory. That's the essence of it. And it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. <clears throat> I believe Lombardi was referencing perseverance that is initiated by faith. Life is beautiful, but it can knock you down. <clears throat> it can put you flat on your back, but you have to get back up. You have to get back up and put one foot in front of the other for the sake of your dreams, your family, and your livelihood. You have to get back up to make a difference in the world because the world needs you. 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 references faith, hope, and love. The scripture presents the idea that faith is required to get you to where you are going. It goes, on to, <clears throat> it goes on to say that love is the greatest of these three because of its eternal power. In addition to love from my Heavenly Father, aunt, uncle, and additional family, this college has given me great love. <clears throat> this college is a family. <clears throat> I realized, I realized that the day that I stepped foot onto this campus in 2013. Davis Nelkins College is a family that truly cares about its students and prepares them for successful and thoughtful engagement in the world. I thank them for that, and it's something we, we graduates should be very proud of. So as we go our separate ways today, remember that faith and perseverance you practice and the love you give and receive can prepare you for successful and thoughtful engagement in the world, like all three in this college has done for me. Thank you, and God bless each of you on your journey throughout life. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. That was very inspirational. The second award is the, J, is the Freeman J. Daniels Academic Achievement Award. This award honors an alumnus of the class of 1922 and one of the college's most distinguished graduates. The Freeman J. Daniels Academic Achievement Award, recognizing the graduating senior with the highest grade point average of his or her graduating class, the valedictorian. This year's valedictorian is, a graduating, is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry and Biology. Please join me in welcoming the valedictorian of Davis and Elkins College, Class of 2017, Colton Alexander Lynn Allen. Hello, everyone. First off, Dr. Oshendorf, I can attest to uh, Hallihurst being very scary at night. <laughs> I experienced the same thing. <laughs> um, also, for all of you that know Brandon, uh, you all probably know that he would probably be up here instead of me. 
Um, Brandon is an incredible guy and definitely one of my best friends. So it's an, it's an incredible experience to get to follow both these great speeches. To begin with, I just want to continue to attest of how excited I am to be on the stage giving this speech. I'm also very humbled. I worked very hard while I was here at DE, but I never anticipated being valedictorian. I know I would not have been here if it weren't for my mom, pushing me to always be my best, my family, my girlfriend. Ah, they're really the best support system I could ever ask for. I have 15 family members here today, and uh, we're coming from Wyoming, so that means a lot. Uh, the professors that have given me so much guidance, uh, Dr. Stover, Dr. Mabry, Brett Kern, Dr. Modry, Go Big Red. <laughs> Um, and the friends that I've made while I've been here. Uh, thank you all for everything you've done in my life. I will never be able to repay you. To the class of 2017, we're finally done. No longer will you need to run to the Booth Library to print off a paper at 4 a.m., which surprisingly is the busiest time for the 24-hour computer lab. <laughs> Uh, no longer will we have to go visit Angie, unfortunately, for brownies. And if you're really lucky, she'll cook you cookies for your birthday. <laughs> it, it may not seem like it now, but this is something that you'll definitely miss and cherish for the rest of your life. Education is the one thing that no one can ever take away from you. And we've all been able to accomplish something that some individuals never had the opportunity for. So take a minute. Take it all in. Try to enjoy the last few moments you have here at Davis and Elkins. At d &E, each incoming class has a different mantra that they, tr that they tend to live by. Our freshman year was leaders of tomorrow. Uh, at least I think so. I looked on the email and I tried to look at the t-shirts and I couldn't tell. So, <laughs> um, After becoming an RA, I had the opportunity to come early and see what the other class's mantras were. And my junior year, the mantra was, write your story. Which, at the time, honestly, Scott, we thought it was really cliche. But um, it, it really meant a lot to me. And when I found out I had the opportunity to come and speak to you guys, that's what I really thought about. So to help close the story that was written here, and to bring forward the next chapter of our lives, I would like to share a few lessons I've learned while in college through stories. Uh, if you know me, you know how much I enjoy telling stories about things that have happened in my life. Uh, and this storytelling can be attributed to my grandpa, someone that I'm very grateful that is able to be at commencement today. Uh, to, give you a, uh, to tell you a little bit about my grandpa, he would be the guy that uh, came to Hallihurst and was ballroom dancing with uh, one of the workers. Uh, when I first came to Dini, I had the same goal that I have today, and that's to become a dentist. Now, I had success in high school, but I was not sure what to expect coming to take college or coming to college taking classes that were, were notoriously more rigorous. I knew that, I knew that I needed to do exceptionally well in all my science classes in order to further my odds getting into dental school. The first biology class that I took at Dini was with Dr. Michelle Mabry, Biology 101. When I, found out when, the first or when I found out when the first test was, I studied much more than I had for anything in my life. But I couldn't help but be nervous. What if I wasn't able to do well in this class, the foundation of all the other biology classes that I took? I had an incredible amount of self-doubt, something that didn't better after taking the test. Later that day, a third of the students gathered for lab, and Dr. Mabry asked everyone how easy the test was or how they were feeling about it. I remember how many of my classmates told her that it was super easy, they didn't know they aced it. And I was, in my head, I was like, even if it was easy, why would you tell them that? <laughs> I was really, I was in my seat thinking, oh man, I thought that test was hard, I must be really behind. About a week later, the results came in and I received an 89, something that I was proud of and felt that I could work towards. 
I looked around. Uh, it was like something I had never seen. So many of my classmates had failed, and it was crazy to see how many people were crying as we were walking out of class. This helped teach the first lesson that I learned while I was at DE. Uh, that is, that hard work pays off. And as President Wood says, the journey continued. When I finished my sophomore year, I had the opportunity to attend Johns Hopkins University for the summer to do biomedical research. There were two things that I was expecting when I arrived. The first, that Johns Hopkins would be a pinnacle, much greater than what Deany had to offer. I also expected to be much further behind my peers, thinking that those going to Hopkins would have a greater knowledge base than I did myself. Upon arriving, I was impressed with the facilities, but the longer I stayed, the more I appreciated Deany. When you first arrive somewhere, you're always being sized up. And I remember a girl, Nicole, who was incredibly worried about trying to show everyone how much she knew. To my surprise, everything that she tried to stump people with, I knew myself. From this brought an incredible amount of self-confidence, an incredible amount of self-pride. To think that I was getting just as quality of an education from DE as someone who went to what they believed was a better school. From this, I learned my second big lesson. Make the most out of wherever you are. And from this, my journey continued. I worked hard and I made the most of what I had and I received my first email giving me the opportunity to interview for dental school. My mom and I were shopping for shoes to match the shoot we had bought at Dillard's. <laughs> my, my mother and girlfriend both think that shoes complete the outfit. <laughs> and uh, after we found the perfect pair, actually the pair I'm wearing now, uh, we asked for some help with an associate. The associate that had helped us looked incredibly familiar, and upon returning with the shoes, I realized that this was someone that I'd gone to high school with. I couldn't remember his name, something that I felt bad, at, or bad about at the time, but we made the normal small talk at first. He asked me what my plans were and where I'd be going from here. From this, a fire was ignited inside me, and I became incredibly excited to tell him my story, one that I'd wrote here at DE. He asked a few more questions, and I tried to give him some advice as he was working. Oh, yeah, I tried to give him some advice as he was working for his associate's degree. And when we were done, he said something that had struck me for a long time. He said, I've watched a great deal of motivational speakers. And when you were talking to me about your dreams and mine, it sounded nearly identical. This made me think for a long time, and I went home and watched some videos on YouTube myself. Now, the thing that motivational speakers have that makes them so special is their passion. And after deeper reflection, I realized that it's this passion that my high school friend saw in me and the ability to transfer this passion onto someone else. From this, I learned my last lesson of my college career. To find what you're passionate about and give this passion to someone else. And from here, our journey continues. I learned a great deal while I was here at DE, and I will always be grateful for the family that I have received here. I've never felt closer to one group of people and to the people that are in the, my innermost circle of friends. You feel like siblings to me. The friends that you make at DE outweigh any that you've likely had before. Friends, find that passion. Work hard and refuse to settle for mediocrity and make the most out of where, wherever you are, and the story you write in the next chapter of your life will be just as special as the one you wrote here. Thank you. Colton and Brandon, thank you very much. And we know there's a bright future ahead for both of you. Nice wingtips, by the way. <laughs> so class of 2017, you ready to graduate? <laughs> All right, Dr. Roy. <laughs> Hi. 
Thank you, Colton. I'd like to invite Mr. Scott Garrett, Vice President for Student Affairs, to come forward to read the names of students receiving their diplomas today. Would the candidates for the Associate in Art and Associate in Science degrees please stand? President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Associate in Art and Associate in Science. These students have met all the requirements for their degree and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive their diplomas. By the authority, by the authority. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College and the State of West Virginia, I now confer upon you the degrees of Associate in Arts and Associate in Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire college community, I wish you God's richest blessings. Would you now come forward to receive your diplomas? The candidates for the degree of Associate in Arts and Associate in Science are led by Halley and Smoot. Halley is the highest ranking candidate for the Associate degree who will receive a scroll symbolizing the honor. Receiving the Associate in Science degree and symbolic scroll is Halley and Smoot, highest ranking Associate degree, highest honors. Students receiving the Associate in Arts degree are Jennifer Lou Ray Lipscomb. Caduce Menkir Michael. Alexandra Leanne Miller. Sierra Brooke. Thorne Shockey. Samantha Lee Smith, honors. Stephanie Dawn White. Sierra Nicole Watring. Students receiving the Associate in Science degree are Youssef Slash Alshamari, <laughs> Elizabeth Carol Arbogast, <laughs> Macy Kayleen Bennett, <laughs> Dustin Tyler Bauer. Megan Marie Burgess, honors. Sydney Faith Curtis. Sarah Jane D'Angelo. Chantel Marie Elza. Ashley Nicole Enterline. Aaron Nicole Heron. Olivia Joe Mackenzie Hudock, high honors. Andrea Morgan Jones. Rachel Page Jones. Tiana Lynn Kapnicki. Stacy Lynn Cook. Paul Joseph Luzi the second honors. Rodnita Renee Miller, Lindsay Leah Pfeiffer, <laughs> Christina, 
Courtney Michelle Poling. Claire Joanna Potter. Chas Brandon Real. Emily May Shreve. Kayla Don Simmons. Andrea Elizabeth Thornhill. Danielle Nicole Wild. Elizabeth Diane Williams. Ridgely Nicole Williams. Abigail Zelda Wittig. <laughs> Stephanie Lee Wooten. Would the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts please stand? President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. These students have met all the requirements for their degrees and have been, and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive their diplomas. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College and by the State of West Virginia, I now confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire college community, I wish you God's richest blessings. Would you now come forward to receive your diploma? The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts are led by William Charles Roboski, the highest ranking candidate for Bachelor of Arts degree, who will receive a scroll symbolizing this honor. Receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree in Symbolic Scroll is William Charles Roboski, highest ranking Bachelor of Arts degree, summa cum laude. <laughs> Additional students receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree are Erica Rishan Alfred. <laughs> Yusef Slash Alshamari. Jacob Michael Antolini. Sierra Elizabeth Carney, cum laude. Justin Dallas Carr. Kayla Ann Carver. Chelsea Lynn Channel. Jacob Stephen Currents. <laughs> Elizabeth Lorraine Drain.
Elizabeth Noel Estes. Stetson Hunter Fath. Bethany Grace Folk, cum laude. Gerald Camden Furby III, magna cum laude. Olivia Paige Grimes. Justin Andrew Guy. Samantha Jean Hornish, cum laude. <laughs> Olivia Joe Mackenzie Hudock, magna cum laude. <laughs> Madeline Marie Humphrey. Her mother, Ruth Humphrey, from our faculty, will present Madeline with her diploma. Emmett Isaiah Jager, magna cum laude. <laughs> Lucinda Marie Landis. Matthew Calvin Lawrence. <laughs> Duncan Gogo Lint. <laughs> Jennifer Lou Ray Lipscomb. Abdulaziz Saad Masood. <laughs> Eric Tyler Matheny. <laughs> Gary Leon McCullough II. <laughs> Jonathan Michael McNemer. Nicola J. Merriman, magna cum laude. Matthew Michael Metz. Alexandra Leanne Miller. Jessica Nicole Morgan, cum laude. I'm going to catch up. Kelsey Patrice Mullins. <laughs> Jacob Leland Nickel. <laughs> Matthew Josiah Olwell, cum laude. His wife, Emily Olson, from our faculty, will present Matthew with his diploma. Zaid Youssef Othman, cum laude. Chas Brandon Real. Megan Hope Sheldon, summa cum laude. Catherine Marie Shiflett. Sierra Brooke Thorne Shockey. Robert Joseph Shomo. Samantha Lee Smith, cum laude. Katie Marie Stonecker. Jonathan Edward Tracy. <laughs> Rachel Eva Marie White. <laughs> Sam
Stephanie Dawn White. Bethany Dawn Williams. Kendall Marie Williams. Forrest Graham Williamson. Daniel Kellogg Wilner. Katie Ann Wilson. Emma Nicole Wolf. Sierra Nicole Watring. Trevor Dylan Ratchford. Matthew Douglas Zorn, magna cum laude. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please stand? President Ward, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. These students have met all the requirements for their degrees and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive their diplomas. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College and by the State of West Virginia, I now confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire college community, I wish you God's richest blessings. Would you now come forward to receive your diplomas? Candidates for degree of Bachelor of Science are led by Colton Alexander Lynn Allen, the highest ranking candidate for the Bachelor of Science degree who will receive a scroll symbolizing this honor. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree and symbolic scroll is Colton Alexander Lynn Allen, highest ranking Bachelor of Science degree, valedictorian Freeman J. Daniels recipient, summa cum laude. Additional students receiving the Bachelor of Science degree are Nicholas Scott Akins, Carlise Nicole Ayers, Tyree Danielle Banks, cum laude. Brooke, Tesha by Lucky, cum laude. Brittany, Danica Bollinger. Mary Jane Braham. Lindsay Marie Brittle.
Kevin Darnell Bracey Davis. Caitlin Amanda Buwani. Brianna Marie Callis. Alistair James Haig Cameron, cum laude. Elise Nicole Cardo. Her father, Reverend Richard Cardo, our interim chaplain, will present Elise with her diploma. Alexander Mackenzie Chevron. Travis Wayne Cleaver. Amy Clevenger. Mark Sean Cordell. Wing Dai, magna cum laude. Samantha Leanne Davis. Whitney Renee Defabaugh. John Albert Dunbar Jr., cum laude. Amber Joanne Evans, magna cum laude. Chelsea Alyssa Ferris. Gerald Camden Furby III, magna cum laude. Jonathan Ward Gaynor, magna cum laude. <laughs> Natalie May Green, summa cum laude. Her mother from our staff, Lisa Green, will present Natalie with her diploma. <laughs> Abdulaziz Khalid Hakami. Paul Wesley Hendricks. Jacob Brian Henry. Tyler Van Honeycutt. Shanda Jane Howe. Kendall Jacqueline Jacobson. <laughs> Emmett Isaiah Jager, magna cum laude. <laughs> Nagisa Katawaka. <laughs> Alistair Cameron Kyle. Paul Joseph Luzzi the second, cum laude. <laughs> Colin Haydad Meadows. <laughs> Susan Caldwell Milliken. Danielle Marie Norton. Ryan Curtis O'Connell, cum laude.
Benjamin Serge Pasture, magna cum laude. Kevin Arthur Pennington. Austin Joseph Pilato, cum laude. Tajay Antoinette Pledger. Alyssa Catherine Richmond. Courtney Beth Scott. Brandon Terry Sellers, summa cum laude. Justin Allen Shiflett. Dakota Shea Sisk. Nicholas Lee Smith. Heather Michelle Sneed. <laughs> Hannah Jordan Snyder, cum laude. <laughs> Wesley James Sprinkle. Ross Matthew Thomas Stewart, magna cum laude. Christopher James Swank, cum laude. Michelle Lee Silva, Deborah Ann Tyser, summa cum laude. Samuel Valieres, magna cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Ware, Haley Catherine Ware, cum laude. Dalton Michael Wegley. <laughs> Rebecca Sue Weiss. <laughs> Ashley Brianne Wilkins. <laughs> Michael Joseph Wood. Stephanie Lee Wooten. <laughs> Thornton Maui Zabaje. Elena Marie Zanella. All other students na whose names appear in today's program are graduating in absentia. Would the graduates please rise? President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you and to this assembly the Davidson Elkins College graduating class of 2017. Would you please join me in saluting these graduates as they move their tassels to the left, signifying their graduation.
you. Please be seated. Congratulations, class of 2017. The next words that you hear will be from the outgoing president of our student assembly, Mary Jane Braham, who appears to be popular among her classmates. MJ is from Independence, West Virginia in Preston County and will be heading following graduation up to Morgantown. She has been accepted into the WVU Pharmacy School. I have to say on a personal note, MJ, I think was the first student that I met when I arrived at Davis and Elkins this past summer. She's been a wonderful leader for our campus community and has left her legacy here and she's gonna be missed. MJ. I'm not gonna move this, okay. Hi guys. <laughs> um, four years, 48 months, 208 weeks, 1,491 days, 35,064 hours, 2,103,840 minutes, 126,230,400 seconds, 100 additional gray hairs on our parents' heads, 20 additional hairs on Scott Goddard's head, $500 being spent on late night sheets runs and the nice store across the street from campus, and at least 10,000 pieces of chicken and servings of rice that we consumed at the dining hall later. Today is the day. Today is the day the rest of our lives begin. I'm gonna be really honest right now and say this is the hardest thing I've ever had to write. What do I say to the people that have affected my life in so many amazing ways? How can I pinpoint every amazing memory that we all have together? How can I, in words, describe our time here that does those memories justice? After a lot of thinking, I've realized I can't. Our memories here are so special and amazing that they will be tattooed onto our brains and hearts for the remainder of our lives. As we grow old and gray, despite where this huge world takes us, there will always be a little school tucked in the rolling hills of West Virginia that will hold a special place in all of our hearts. With that being said, I would like to thank everyone for attending today. Thank you to the faculty members, the staff, the admissions team, trustees, and leadership team. Um, thank you for making today possible in so many more ways than one. Thank you to the parents, grandparents, siblings, and friends that are here as well. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for raising some of the best people that I have ever met and getting to them, them to this point in their lives. Without you all, we would not be in these gowns and funny caps receiving our diplomas with our names on them today. Each and every one of our memories, whether they were in the classroom, the calf, the dorms, the theater, the gallery, in town, on the court, the field, the course, or in the pool, they are all unique and exceptional in their very own ways. Here are three of my personal favorite memories that we can all relate to in one way or another. The first, move-in weekend. Move-in weekend was always interesting to say the very least. From coming in freshman year with all the pointless items you didn't need that the athletic teams and the RAs had to lug to the highest possible floor of each building to senior year moving people down a muddy Prez Hill because the bridge, the bridge was yet to be finished. Move-in weekend always created a noteworthy time. The second, winter term. Winter term was always the very worst and somewhat best portion of the semester. Where friendships were torn and tattered during winter symposium sessions, the buses couldn't make it back to Elkins, so everyone got to stay in a casino. <laughs> and everyone stayed extremely hydrated. It's safe to say that future students are lucky that they do not have to experience <laughs> a time such as that one. And the third and final, deja vu. What can I say? Deja vu. A full 72 hours of a literal good time. From the concerts to knocker ball to the spontaneous parties in random places on campus, there was never a dull moment during deja vu. It never failed. There was always that one person <laughs> to kick out at least one of the concerts, even if they were just trying to sit on stage and get a better view of the festivities. I need to turn my page. All the Great Britain won our Olympic Games. Anyone that is Team Kenny is a real winner. <laughs> Here's to all the good times, and may I say we can, and some cannot, remember. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better way to follow those memories with 17 lessons, like Colton did, um, that somewhat, somehow in some way encompass our time here at d &E. The first, 
Nothing on a warm Elkins day is more fun than hanging out on Presto in a lawn chair or in a blow-up pool, drinking a cold beverage of your choice. Number two, there is no shame in chasing a truck around campus that is playing Christmas carols, especially when it's giving away free ice cream. <laughs> Number three, when, you're, when you tell your friends to not do something, like vote for you for homecoming queen, they will definitely do it. Trust me. <laughs> Number four, everyone's worst memory or not memory always ended up being someone's favorite Snapchat story the very next morning. The sweetest ladies, um, number four, the sweetest ladies, Grady and Miss Adeline, always can brighten your day or one, in one way or another. It never fails when everyone walks into the calf. They always knew your name, asked how your day was going, and knew how to make you feel loved. Thanks, Grady and Miss Adeline. We love you guys. I hope they're here. I don't know if they are or not, but we do love them very much. Number six, going to the movies and saving two fifty on a ticket is always a big deal in college. That 250 can be used in much more productive ways. Number seven, getting up 10 minutes early on a Sunday morning is always worth it so you can get in the front of the line for Waffle Sunday. Number eight, when you get fined by security for drinking out of a good old red Solo cup, always paying cash, never pennies. (laughs) There you go, Austin. Yes, my man. Okay. Number nine, that even though you pay $100 For your parking pass, you are not permitted to park at the calf during the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. It's always a great thing to see that little orange ticket sticking under your windshield wiper. (laughs) Number 10, it's such a blessing there's always someone working in the mailroom. If they expected us to open those boxes on a daily basis, we'd never get our mail. Thank you to everyone that works in the mailroom. We appreciate you. (laughs) Number 11, during the winter, snow is such an exciting thing. Until you slip on ice multiple times going to class and fall almost every single one of those times. Um, Number 12, the Dini discount at Mickey D's is always a lifesaver, especially when you have five separate orders in each vehicle. (laughs) Number 13, when we were all struggling to walk to the calf in the morning, when Vinny saw you, he automatically knew your order and would have it ready to go right away. Always look forward to the breakfast sandwiches. Um, Number 14, if you need to find anything on this campus, it's always up a hill as well as a flight of stairs. (laughs) It's true. Number 15, Elkins is a very special place with extraordinary people that are always willing to go above and beyond for all. I would like to take a moment to thank my second families for everything they have done and continue to do for me. The Riggleman's, um, Scott's, uh, Larkin's, where you guys are, um, Davis's, Neal's, and Pumphrey's. Thank you for everything. I really love you guys. Um, number 16, if you're scared about your future, remember there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Whether that's Natty Light, Bud Light, Keystone Light, or Bush Light, you can make that decision. <laughs> What can I say? Beer is a lot on campus. Um, And number 17, I would have my last comment for you, but it's still buffering. Thank you, Dini (laughs) Wi-Fi. Okay. After all those memories and lessons, I would like to leave you With the lyrics from a song by Rascal Flats. I hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow and each road leads you where you want to go. And if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose, I hope you choose one that means the most to you. And if one door opens to another door closed, I hope you keep on walking until you find that window. If it's cold outside, show the world the warmth in your smile. I hope you never look back, but you never forget all the ones who love you in the place you live. I hope you always forgive and you never regret and you help somebody every single chance you get. And you find or, and you find God's grace in every mistake, but always give more than you take. But more than anything, yeah, more than anything. My wish for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to. That your dreams stay big and your worries stay small. Okay. I'm good. You never need to carry more than you can hold. And while you're out there getting where you're getting to, I hope you know somebody loves you and wants the same things too. Yeah, this is my wish. Congratulations. And I hope everyone has a great final d and day. Yours truly, Mary Jo.
please be seated. MJ. MJ, thank you for sharing sentiments, I'm sure, from your classmates as well. I, I did notice a lot of uh, reference there to hydration. <laughs> I never realized MJ liked water so much. So. <laughs> And I'm going to remain blissfully ignorant as president. <laughs> I want to ask one last thing of our graduating class. First of all, I would like to ask you, if you would, please stand. There's two groups that I want to give you an opportunity to say thanks to. The first group is sitting behind me back here. The faculty of this college are the ones that have made this day possible for you. They do what they do because they love what they do. And they do it with passion and they do it well. And I thought maybe while you're standing up, you might want to say thanks. And while you're standing, there's some more folks here that might have had a little bit of influence on you. And my suspicion is they're sitting down these rows and up in that balcony. They're the moms, they're the dads, they're the family members, they're the dear friends. They're the ones that have sacrificed, that have nurtured, that have cared for you, and that have made today possible. And I suspect you all need to say thanks. I want to invite everybody to join our graduates in standing now as we prepare to bring the 108th commencement of Davis and Elkins College to a close. To our graduates, our best wishes go with you. Remain connected to Davis and Elkins College. You're a part of us, and we're a part of you. I'm going to ask Dr. Bob McCutcheon to come to offer our benediction, which will be followed with the alma mater. Almost exactly 40 years ago, in 1977, there was a television event. I don't imagine that our new graduates were following it very closely, nor were you were in 1977. It was a miniseries, a television miniseries about the life of Jesus. It's very well done. It's an international cast, and uh, many writers contributed to it. Uh, but it went on for several episodes over a few weeks, and the closer it got to the conclusion, I can just imagine the more nervous the filmmakers got. How are we going to end this series? If we show the resurrected Jesus, we'll upset a lot of people. If we don't show the resurrected Jesus, will upset a lot of people. How will this end? Well, the, uh, the cast, again, was very good. The director was Franco Zeffirelli. One of the writers was Anthony Burgess, who wrote A Clockwork Orange. Not theologians, but it was also an artistic problem. And the way they concluded the show, I thought, was brilliant. One of the characters was either Joseph of Arimathea or Nicodemus, I forget which one, stood in front of the empty tomb. Jesus did not appear, but the tomb was open and empty. And this character looked at it and said simply, now it all begins. Now what begins? Persecution and crusades and intolerance or brotherly love and peace? It was very difficult to read his tone, and that's what made the scene so effective. We want to talk about uncertainty. Where have we been called today? What lies ahead? It's graduation, commencement, ending, beginning. As we all gather today with the class of 2017 on the brink of the future, we ask the blessing of the Father who creates, the Son who saves, and the Spirit who sustains. 
Now it all begins. Amen. Our alma mater is printed in your program. Join with me in singing. true. 